because I couldn't predict what kind of person you were going to be. Okay, what's my next question? Okay, Darby from Atlanta, Georgia. What is the number one reason you were inspired to live on a farm, and what's your advice for someone considering it? Okay, the number one reason I wanted to live on a farm is probably because I read a lot of books as a kid, and I watched a lot of old movies, and that fast-paced city life seemed, oh, that's fun, but there was something so beautiful about a small life, about about putting your clothes out on the line, and about making your own garden, and, and growing your own food, and being in touch with every little part of your day-to-day -day life, um, and finding the beauty in simple things, and so, you know, I grew up, and I moved to the city, and it was fun, but... I didn't feel good there. Um, so yeah, that's, it had been a lifelong thing. I think your heart has a song in it to be a total cheese ball. And I think, uh, I think you watched too much Anna Green Gables. I watched a ton of Anna Green Gables. I read a ton of Anna Green Gables, and I watched a ton of Anna Green Gables. What would you say is good advice for someone that wants to move to a farm? If you're considering on having donkeys, don't go near its bottom. Oh, yeah, don't get kicked by a donkey. <laughs> don't get kicked by a donkey. That'll ruin your whole day. Oh. Um, I would say if you're going to move to a farm, first of all, you have to know how to make fun of yourself because you're going to fail. And if you're the kind of person who gets really frustrated, it's probably not for you. Um, but if you're the kind of person that can find the fun in failure, that's something that we talk about in the book, uh, then every single day is just a different experiment, you know? There's so much to do around here, and you just have to wing it until you become a pro at it. Hey, thank you, Cherry Face. Hey, Cherry Face. What Cherry Face say to you? Oh, he said hi. <laughs> right on, man. Um, yeah, what's my next question? Suck Your it to me. next question is uh, Dana from Staten Island, New York. What's up, Dana? What is your favorite memory from the O-T-H set? <laughs> you, do you like or not like when I talk about One Tree Hill? Like when people- It's fine! It's fine! It's fine! <laughs> <laughs> You're so aggressive about it. <laughs> um, my favorite memory from One Tree Hill? I mean, the really big episodes, <laughs> I've talked about this quite a lot. The really big episodes were really fun. The state championship episode was really fun. People have been asking this a lot lately, and um, there was an episode where I was on crutches. It was after Peyton had been shot, and Brooke comes over and talks to her on her front porch. And I think we'd all been really exhausted by work. We were working crazy hours. You know, the school shooting episode was really, really difficult. And um, there was so much to process. And so Sophia and I were shooting this quiet little scene together. Four o'clock in the morning, and um, we went back to base camp and had a, had a group of shots of us cooking. And I just remember like being able to laugh with her after so much stress and anxiety. And she piggybacked me out of the scene. She like picks me up and carries me out, and I just. I think about that the same way I think about, like, memories of my friends from high school piggybacking me out. It's just a, you'll know one day. Are you going to be super creeped out when all your friends at school are like, I watched your mom in this show where she's kissing and crying all the time. Is that going to be weird? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Now they're just like, your dad kills people on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, you love my streaks of gray? Thank God someone does. Um, geez. My favorite thing about being a mom? Hey. Honestly, he's going to be a teenager so soon, and it's going to break my heart because he's going to be too cool for me. And so I am just sucking up all the gust time I can have right now. And you are spoiling me with attention. Do you ever get overwhelmed with me hovering? Yes, 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 yes. Um, all right, give me another question, kiddo. Okay. Uh, Sarah from, don't know quite now how to pronounce this. Uh, Sarah from Parma, Ohio. What is your favorite project you've worked on so far? Ooh, honey, um, I have a lot of favorites. I have a lot of favorites. I had a really good time on Lethal Weapon. It was fun to, like, jump out of 
helicopters and do yeah. stunts and stuff. That was a good time. Yes. White collar will always be something I love a lot, a lot, a lot. They gave me my love for acting back, and I appreciate them so much. And if you're hanging out at home tonight, um, I'm going to be doing a uh, an event with them on Stars in the House with Gus's favorite, Seth Radetzky. Oh, wait, someone's asking about Grace and Adam. Yeah, I Grace just heard Grace. Yeah, Grace <laughs> so. was super fun. Grace with an exclamation mark. <laughs> yes, an exclamation mark is right. Um, yeah, exclamation mark. And I love all the Christmas movies that I get to do with my friends. You know, Lifetime has been letting me produce, and I appreciate that they champion women at their network. And so they have been letting me put together projects. And I think it shows on screen how much we all actually love and and care about each other. Such a good assistant. Um, so yeah, those are some of my favorites. I'm trying to think what else. I like every job that I do in yeah. the moment. Like, have I ever come home and been like, that was a real stinker? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I don't think I have. Gus is calling me out. Um, Council of Dads was so fun. Uh, that we just shot this year. Like, I got a phone call in November. They were like, Hillary, get on a plane, go to Savannah, Georgia, go have a ton of fun, play this character, Margo, who is feisty. And my character airs tonight. Are you going to watch it? Maybe. Maybe. The thing is out. I didn't really like it because when you were gone, I'm not used to you being gone, so uh, I got in trouble in school quite a lot. <laughs> I think you got in trouble in school because you're a Morgan and a Burton. <laughs> not because I was gone, but, um, yeah, it really bothered me that you didn't like when I was, well, no, it made me feel good that you wanted me to be home. That felt nice. Uh, all right, what do you see? What's next? Okay. Okay, Jordan L. from Washington, Missouri. Okay. What? Hi, Jordan. Does your family ever travel with you when you leave to film a new project? Oh, my gosh, what a great follow-up question to you just telling me that it sucks when I leave. Um, you've traveled with me before. Yeah, I've traveled with you. Where have you liked going? I have no clue. You like going to Louisiana. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, you like Louisiana. That's where we do um, a lot of our Christmas movies. And then we mostly, though, travel for dad's work. I didn't have the best kids' club experience, though. <laughs> Gus got into a fight with some local kids at the kids' club. They stole my underpants! <laughs> okay. They might have stolen his pants while he was swimming. <laughs> um, but that said, we like going to all the different, like, like historic villages and Cajun Zydeco bands and stuff like that. We have a good time there. Um, but we travel with Dad a lot. Dad takes us. We went to London last year. We've gotten to go to New Zealand. We try as much as possible to balance going to, going to school and taking school very seriously and also um, being together as a family. So we're going to miss some days of school here and there, but we will get our work done, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, where's your favorite place we've ever traveled as a family for work? Um, I'm going to say... Oh, yeah. London. Yeah? What was your favorite spot in London? Um... We like Tower of London. We went and we saw Les Mis. Oh, yeah. Les Mis was awesome. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It was really cool. Um, all right, give me another question. Oh, we got another Sarah from Taylor, Pennsylvania. Where is your favorite place to hide away around the farm? I never get to hide. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> your dad goes to the garage. I, where do you go? I go, I don't know. Gus uh, 
Dad just got permission. He now can drive our little um, a little rhino around. It's like a little ATV vehicle with a buggy on it, and he's very responsible. But he went and he got firewood for his dad earlier today, and he'll go run errands for me all over the property. I don't even wear a helmet. Here, <laughs> <laughs> we put that over there. Gotta keep um, entertaining. No, Mom just stays locked out in the house. I, I'll, I'll retreat to the garden when the garden's in. That's where I usually am hiding out. Yeah. What's your favorite thing that we grow in the garden? Uh, I have no clue. What's the thing that you're like, oh, yeah, it's growing. Awesome. Probably strawberries. You geek oh, out yeah. for the berries. Joan from Chicago, Illinois. I don't know if this has been answered before, but what book can you read over and over again without getting tired of it? And honey, why? honey, you want to answer that question for your mama? What is it? I don't know. You know what book I read over and over I again. I don't know. What are you looking for right All now? I know is are those like creepy books that make you don't go to sleep. I mean, I read a lot of ghost books. <laughs> um, I read Dandelion Wine. Oh. And over. And I just told you, you're old enough. I'm going to read it to you now. Do you think 10 years old is old enough to appreciate the full beauty of Ray Bradbury's Dandelion Wine? Well, I watched Ray Bradbury's Theater. And did you like it? Yes. Yeah, he but had... I watched, but I watched that when I was like seven. I feel like you'd probably like it even more now because you are so much smarter than when you were seven. Um... I mean, you were a really smart seven-year-old. <laughs> You're just like a supremely bright ten-year-old. Um, yeah, Dandelion Wine. I got my very first copy of Dandelion Wine when I was 19 years old. I was living in Manhattan and very much missing uh, Virginia and missing the small town that I'd grown up in. So I found this book and just randomly picked it up because I really liked Martian Chronicles. I really liked Fahrenheit 451. And it spoke to me in a way that made me feel not alone. Uh, and it was the exact kind of book that I wanted to write one day. Um, I just wanted to live in that book. And so I have given it to people over and over and over again. I gave it to your dad when I first started dating your dad. Um, and it's a book, honestly, that deals with loss in a way that I think is really constructive. And uh, so when people that I love experience a loss and I don't necessarily have the right words to articulate what I want to say to them, I will oftentimes give them a copy of Dandelion Mine. That's a good question. Hmm. Okay. Are you riveted? So... Amanda from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Hey, we got family in North Carolina. If you could have an entire day to yourself, what would... <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. What you choose to do and what? What you choose to do. What would I do? What would you do? Alone? Alone. I can't think of the last time I ever was alone. Well, just imagine that you could have anyone you want. Yeah, I don't I don't want to be alone. I worked so hard to get the family that I have. Then the thing you would pick is being with your family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would hang out with you. Although, it would be really cool if, like, everyone in the house picked up all their own toys and put their own dishes away. That, I mean, that... What do you mean? I totally do that. <laughs> um, what's my next question? You're doing a really good job. Thank you for helping me. I know you'd rather be, you know... Playing video games. Playing video I games. Know. Watching Gumball. I would totally say the name of the video game I would be playing right now, but I don't want to be copyrighted. <laughs> okay. Brazil. Hi, Brazil. Hi, England. My, what's my favorite animal? Oh, I don't know. I like crows. So everyone in our family has an animal that we um, we like a lot. And we have a relative who takes part in powwows 
Wilson has really, you know, immersed himself in that part of our family's lineage. And so he called and gave Gus his Native American name, Wasabagoa. Yeah, I totally forgot that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Um, but he also gave Gus his animal, and so Gus is a bear because he's perfectly confident and Yay. can stand alone and is, um, yeah, you're, you're a really confident person, and I like that about you. Your dad likes to think that he is a wolf. He's a beaver. But the beaver <laughs> is the animal that, like, works really hard and takes care of its family, and we did a test. And we filled in everything about Dad, and it came back the beef. <laughs> but George is a bunny. Do you remember when George was born, and all of a sudden bunnies popped up oh, everywhere? Yeah. We were, I remember being at um that old that old the Native American site in uh, the Outer Banks, and we saw like three bunnies. Yeah, they just came hopping right up to her. They love her. And then I have always been partial to the crow or the raven. I mean, I like I like birds that are up to no good. Eh. I'm definitely like a bird person. Just kind of hollow bone <laughs> and pecking at stuff, kind of irritating. <laughs> is that is that pretty on point? I'm pretty surprised that George isn't like a woodpecker, like annoying. <laughs> <laughs> they actually thought of adding that to a uh, nine craft. <laughs> a woodpecker? Yeah. Would it just come in and like ruin people's home? Yeah. That's terrible. All right. Next question. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Erica from Harville, Massachusetts. Okay. What are some books that you love or are currently reading? Okay. So right now. Um, Dad was shooting a movie in Massachusetts when everything was shut down. And Gus and I were excited to go to Massachusetts because there were two people there that we wanted to meet. So the first weekend we were there, before quarantine, we got to meet one of our heroes, Aaron Mankey. And he writes and produces the podcast Lore, Cabinet of Curiosities. He also produces Dana Schwartz's podcast, Noble Blood. We are in the car so much as a family, and we listen to his podcast all the time. Can survive for a second? I can survive for a second. What are you going to get? Um, so Aaron came to visit, and he happened to bring young Gus Morgan uh, autographed copies of his book, which was thrilling. And he just, like, sat and talked to Gus for a very long time. So Aaron Mankey is the coolest dude ever. So we were reading his books, Lore, um, and they're all based on his podcast. So that's really cool. Oh, I hear someone coming back. Where are you going, boss? Um, and then the next person that we were supposed to meet, I did not get a chance to meet. Alice Hoffman is one of my favorite writers. Uh, obviously, I began loving her for Practical Magic, but then I, you know, got, I grew up. <laughs> Practical Magic came out a while ago. What, what were you looking for? A lore book? <laughs> yeah, it's on your desk. It's okay. Um, yes, I checked my desk. I checked my desk. Um, so Alice Hoffman is someone who I really admire. She writes about witchy women and a number of her books are my favorites. I love The Red Garden. I love the prequel to Practical Magic, uh, Rules of Magic. She's got another prequel coming out called Magic Lessons. She's just, she's awesome. She's really awesome. And she champions women who are misunderstood and perhaps a bit lippy. Um, so I, are we back? Yeah, that's what I'm reading right now. All right, hit so, me with another one, boss. Jessica from Jonesboro, Tennessee. Yeah? My mom's family grew up on a farm and loved he hearing about all their... And my mom's family grew up on a farm and loved hearing all about all your their adventures. 
that we had on our farm that's going to be like a family legend? Well, the only family legend I remember is getting lost in Georgia, and, <laughs> and you were so hot you took off your feet. That's you true. You took off your, uh, took off your sandals. Right, we went on a short walk that turned into a six-hour hike. Um...